Hi everyone and welcome to your taster session for Psychology A-Level. The aim of this session is to give you some information about what the Psychology A-Level will involve and some of the sk uh, skills required to study with us, um, whilst at the same time as doing some hopefully quite fun and interesting activities about the topic of psychopathology, which you might know as mental health issues. Now before we get started, you're going to need to grab some paper, so please make sure that you've got enough to complete three quite big activities and also for those of you who are quite keen you might want to take some notes about what the course involves but obviously that information is available to you on the website and in the prospectus. So once you've got your paper we're going to go with our first task so you might want to pause it here and grab your paper or let's jump straight into our first task which is true or false. So the true or false round is nice and straightforward, literally a couple of minutes to go through 10 questions which are going to appear on the screen initially. You just need to jot down whether you think they are true or false and this will uh, kind of give us some information about how much you know at this point about psychopathology. So off we go, first statement. Number one, mental health problems are quite rare, about one in 100, true or false. Two, multiple personality disorder is a real mental illness. Three, mental illnesses can be treated with medication. Four, geliophobia is the fear of laughter. Five, mental illnesses are caused by problems in childhood. Statement six, mental illnesses often run in families. Seven, people with schizophrenia can hear voices that aren't there. Eight, some things classed as mental illness in our country are normal in other countries. Nine, serial killers all have mental illnesses. And lastly, 10, what is considered a mental illness can change over time. So you may just want to rewind those and just have another quick look over them before I go through the answers now. So statement number one, mental health problems are quite rare, about one in 100. This statement is false. Mental health issues are much more commonly occurring in our society. So approximately one in every six adults will be diagnosed with a mental illness at some point in their adult life. With depression and anxiety, some people estimating being as common as one in three nowadays. There are some which are quite rare, including schizophrenia. This does occur approximately about one in 100. Statement two, multiple personality disorder is a real mental illness, that is true. It's not multiple personality disorder, it is known as a dissociative identity disorder, but it is a clinically diagnosable condition that is very, very rare, so it occurs in only about 1% of the population. Three, mental illnesses, including multiple personality disorder, can be treated with medication. Now, this is absolutely true. These days, there are lots of mental illnesses which have drugs specifically designed to treat them and reduce the symptoms. For example, if you get diagnosed with clinical depression, you might be given an antidepressant called uh, Prozac or fluoxetine. Four, geliophobia is the fear of laughter. True or false? This is true. According to psychology, you can have a fear or phobia of any stimulus, and that would include people laughing. The word geliophobia comes from gelo, which is Greek for laugh, which is quite common for most phobias. Most of them do have a name which originates from Greek or Latin. Five, mental illnesses are caused by problems in childhood. Now, this is false. Some might be, but not always the case. So some people argue that schizophrenia, for example, could be linked to quite um, cold or domineering parents in uh, childhood, but not all mental illnesses have got anything to do with problems in childhood. There are a number of mental illnesses now um, which are not down to the way that you've been raised, but are instead down to your uh, genetics and specific brain abnormalities, which leads us into statement six. Mental illnesses 
cases often run in families. If mental illnesses are in your genes, then this statement must be true. Many mental illnesses come from an increased risk um, of a family history. So unfortunately, if you have got someone in your family who has been diagnosed previously with a mental illness, it does put you at a greater uh, risk of developing it. For example, if you've got a parent who's schizophrenic, you are six times more likely to get that than someone in the general population. Seven, people with schizophrenia can hear voices that aren't there, and this is true. This is known as an auditory hallucination, and it's not experienced by all schizophrenics, but it is one of the most common types of symptom that we associate with schizophrenia. Hallucinations are false sensations, so auditories tend to be the most common, followed by visual hallucinations, which is seeing things that aren't there. Eight, some things classed as mental illness in our country are normal in other countries. Now, this is true. For example, in some African tribes, hearing voices is seen as a spiritual gift. So it's actually a positive rather than a negative. Now, in the UK, as we've just said with question seven, if you were to hear voices, you would be considered mentally unwell and it might be a symptom of schizophrenia. So those views of mental health issues do vary greatly depending on where you are in the world. Number nine, serial killers all have mental illnesses. Now, this is false. Though many, if not all, will be classed as psychopaths, that's not actually a diagnosable mental health issue. Now, some serial killers do try to use mental health issues um, as a defence, all right, in order to achieve a lighter sentence, perhaps in court. Doesn't always work out for them, um, but this creates the common misconception that serial killers must be mentally ill, and that's not simply the case. And lastly, statement 10, what is considered a mental illness can change over time. And this is true. Now, did you know that society often changes its mind on what it considers to be normal and abnormal? For example, prior to the 1970s, if you were openly homosexual, you were actually potentially going to be diagnosed with a mental health issue and could have been institutionalised. OK, so our views of mental illness do change significantly over time. So give yourself a mark out of 10 there. All right. And let's see how much you know about psychopathology before we get going with the bulk of our task today. Once you've done that, we're going to move into some key information about what the course involves if you are to come and study A-level psychology with us. OK, so now that we've had a look at the true or false, I'm just going to introduce you briefly to some core information about what the A-level involves. OK, so this is the bit that you might want to write down, but it's not essential. So first and foremost, what is psychology? A lot of you will be sitting doing the taster sessions and you might not actually be familiar um, with what the, the subject involves and what it's about. So we typically define psychology as the scientific study of the human mind, brain and behaviour. Now, we'll just point out that it is classed as a science. So for that reason, we would always emphasise the fact that psychologists conduct research studies. So it's not just a bunch of old fuddy duddies kind of sat around waffling about what they think psychology is. It's about collecting empirical data and conducting statistical analysis to investigate and come up with some causes of human behaviour. So that's just to let you know there that it is actually classed as a science. So what will you be studying then if you do this at A level. Now these aren't all of the topics it has to be said but these are some of the main ones okay. So we've got memory all right looking at how capable your memory is and why it doesn't work that well so also looking at forgetting. We look at human aggression and we look at that really from a nature versus nurture point of view whether or not it's a product of our biology or whether it's more to do with kind of environmental circumstances. Obviously at the bottom as well we've got the extent to which human behaviour can be explained by biology. So I've just referred there to nature versus nurture. We look at that repeatedly over the course of the A level. In the centre, we've got psychopathology, which is the main focus of our taster session for today. And one of the main disorders that you will be looking at as part of your A level is schizophrenia. So what do we think are the causes of that particular mental health issue and how would we go about defining it? What are the symptoms associated? Obedience tends to be quite interesting. So 
what causes certain humans to go to the extent of inflicting such pain and suffering on vulnerable groups, all right, so vulnerable minority groups who essentially haven't done anything wrong, just like we saw in the Holocaust. And then lastly, we do also cover statistics and mathematical calculations. As I've said, psychology now is classed as a science, so you have to be prepared to do a little bit of data interpretation here and there. So that's what you will study. And it's just important to note as well at this point that there are certain skills that you need in order to be successful at A-level psychology. So I've briefly mentioned that it is a science. So we would expect a good understanding, not brilliant because we're not physics and we're not chemistry, but a good understanding of what scientific principles are. So things like writing a hypothesis, understanding what variables are and so on and so forth. You've also got to have reasonably good mathematical skill in order Order to do some of the data analysis task and then most importantly you've got to have reasonably good English skills okay so you do need to make sure that you are achieving all right good grades in those three subjects okay now you also need to just be aware very quickly here that um, the A level is assessed entirely through examinations right at the end of the two years with us so if you struggle sometimes with the uh, pressures that are associated with exams then the psychology A level might not be a great choice but having said that there are a number of our students who don't necessarily enjoy doing the exams but the content that they cover in a level psychology itself is interesting enough to kind of motivate them through that exam period right at the end of the two years and i would say the most important thing that's um kind of gets a lot of people on board with psychology is do you want to learn about who you are and why people are the way that they are if you've got any inclination uh, about learning about people and being inquisitive then psychology might be the a-level for you so that's a little bit of information and guidance then as to what um, the course will involve and the skills that you might require now at this stage, I'm going to ask you to go into the main chunk of the task for today's uh, taster session. Um, you can access the link in a number of different ways. OK, so this is the link here that you're going to be clicking on. I'm going to put that underneath the description on the YouTube video. It's also um, cl a clickable link on the image on your instruction sheet. So you can get to it in a number of different ways. But you're going to go now from this video over onto a website called TED-Ed and you can can see all the tasks are listed there for you you're going to work through them in order and then once you finish the and finally section you're going to return to this video and you cannot complete the taster session so swap it over now all right from uh, this video click the link and it'll take you into TED -Ed. OK, so hopefully you've enjoyed that little activity there on how to define abnormal behaviour. And we're going to finish off now with a final little task, moving away from how to define what is abnormal, but how to actually define when someone is struggling with a mental health condition. How do, how do we actually diagnose a mental illness? Now, the word diagnosis means to identify what illness someone has from analysing the symptoms collectively that they are experiencing. Diagnosing these illnesses is therefore quite difficult because the symptoms can vary quite a lot and as a result of that over the years what has been put together are what we call diagnostic manuals. So one of the most commonly used diagnostic manuals for mental health conditions is known as the DSM. So this is a list of all symptoms associated with all known mental health conditions and that allows doctors to therefore diagnose people with a specific illness and thus give them uh, treatment which will hopefully help their recovery. So let's see how many disorders you are familiar with and if you know any of the symptoms associated, shall we, is our last little task. Now, over the course of the A-level, you will study four mental illnesses. So we've got phobias, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and lastly, schizophrenia. And what I'd like you to do now on your final bit of paper is I'd like you to take a look at the symptoms which I'm going to list on the screen and just do a little sorting task, okay? So these are all of your statements here. Oops. 
We've got 12 in total. So if you want to just pause this video here and have a read through those 12 statements and try and sort them under the headings of phobias, OCD, depression and schizophrenia. And then I'll go through the answers in a moment. OK, so hopefully you've paused that there and you've been able to try and do this sorting task. So let's now reveal the answers. So for OCD, you should have had 5, 7 and 11. A preoccupation with something, OK? Uh, uncontrollable thoughts that keep entering your head, which results in repetitive or ritualistic behaviours to try and eliminate the distress that they're experiencing. For phobias, you should have 1, 3 and 9. Phobia is a fear. By, uh, caused by a particular object or situation, which the individual will then try to avoid at all costs. And if they are unfortunately presented with that situation or stimulus, they're going to experience intense distress. Depression should have been six, eight and ten. So feelings of worthlessness and intense sadness, thus creating a loss of activity um, and loss of interest in most daily activities. And you're not able to experience pleasure. So it's not just a case of feeling sad, it's that you're not able to feel happy. And then schizophrenia, lastly, 2, 4 and 12. Hallucinations, so things that aren't there. Speech, which is really confused and disorganised. And then delusional beliefs, which are completely untrue. So it might be an idea as well, maybe, to have a look at back at those cases that you've been reading as part of the TED-Ed activity and see if you can spot any of the disorders um, in those cases. We would argue that some of those people could actually by, be diagnosed with one of these four mental health conditions based on the symptoms that they are showing. So I wanted to just finish off there with you um, with a little task of what are the mental illnesses that we will be studying and how do we look for the symptoms and how do we diagnose them. So hopefully you found all of those tasks quite interesting today. And just to wrap the session up, we're just going to see whether or not psychology therefore might be the right A-level for you and maybe sometimes why it's not the best A-level to take. So psychology is for you if you want to understand human behaviour. So if you're quite inquisitive and quite interested in learning about why we are why we are. Um, if you can express your ideas clearly in a written form, so I also mentioned earlier if you've got quite good English skills, you've also got to have quite a, an interest in science, so I'm not asking you all to be chemists or biologists, but some sort of interest in science, and if you can memorise and learn lots of information, because obviously it is an exam-based subject. Therefore, it might not be the best A-level for you if you dislike those big exams that we spoke about a little while ago. Um, if you find it difficult to revise and you quite um, get quite stressed out or you're not necessarily motivated to revise in that nature, then we maybe want to reconsider whether or not A-level psychology is the right thing for you. And then lastly, please don't ever pick A-level psychology if you think it's going to be an easy choice. Interesting, yes, but easy, no. So hopefully you've enjoyed this taster session today and I look forward to seeing some of you in the future. Take care.